All right, greetings everyone and welcome to February's uh, Downtown Orlando UX Meetup. So do UX, that's what many of us do, but we do um, have folks from other industries join. We often get POs, uh, people switching careers and um, developers come too. So it's awesome to have everybody here and uh, we'll get rolling on the topic. Um, but beforehand, uh, we hope you all had a great Valentine's Day and uh, that you and your family are doing safe and well. We appreciate you coming out this evening and um, look forward to seeing you. So if you do have a camera, it'd be awesome to, to see you at the end of this, especially we will likely try to get a picture of everyone. So we're, at least at that point, we'll ask you to turn your camera on. Um, if you can't, that's okay though. Um, if you want to, you can raise your hand. Some of us will be looking at the chat and trying to um, respond in there, but you can also um, maybe chime in if you get an opportunity uh, as we're going through tonight. And um, we look forward to having some participation from you all. Our mission here at Do UX is to create opportunities for anyone to learn and share the knowledge in the field of UX. Uh, it was also to keep things going in Central Florida, but this remote opportunity has given us a chance to really, as you see from the chat, uh, spread our wings. And it's wonderful to see people outside the Central Florida community. If we do have a live formal downtown Orlando UX event, we will definitely have a uh, connection so that we can have virtual attendees. We still will have like uh, coffee events and um, brew UX from time to time. And those will be a smaller event. We probably won't have a virtual opportunity, but thank you all for coming. Uh, our co-organizers, a few of us are on tonight. Abhishek, I don't think is here right now, but um, Jason, you've seen in, in uh, the intro here and Leah will be sharing a little bit of her work this evening. Nick will as well, I know me, I'm talking right now, and Matt is on the call as well. So if you wanna connect with us, maybe take a screenshot of this, we'd love to um, connect with you and reach out if you have any questions about UX or other things, software or development or project related. Um, I'm sure one of us could help you out or even maybe um, information on your portfolio or anything like that. And tonight's discussion is on organizing your artboard, canvas, making sense of what could be chaos. Uh, we will have panelists this evening. I didn't know what else to call them, but they're panelists. So uh, Selena, Leah, Justin, and Nick. So Selena works with Red Venture. She's a product designer. Leah is at Advent Health as a UX designer. Justin is with NBC Sports Next, Golf Now. And he's a senior UI UX designer and Nick Clark is with Axel. He's a senior product designer. So it's great to have this diversity to see what people do on their canvases and artboards. Uh, but before we dive into them presenting what they do, I figure I'd share a little bit, why does this even matter? Why does anyone even care? And if you look at the left, it gives you a little bit of a clue as to why maybe. Uh, it can help the future you. So think about the last book you read, um, how you've marked things, you've maybe stuck a sticky note on there. Um, if there's anything you've ever done like that, maybe you come back and you're like, where are my notes? And you start remembering that you mark your notes in a similar way. Um, that way, whenever you come back to something, you can always recover it or find it more quickly or make heads or tails of it uh, in a more meaningful way. Um, also, you can um, allow others to quickly orient and contribute. And that's not just designers. So think about your UXers, your POs, your developers, stakeholders, um, researchers, uh, you name it, they can all benefit from it. Um, you can see your iterations of work. So if you look at the left here of these three examples that you'll see, they're very similar. You can orient to them and we might see something like that a little bit later. On the right is one that actually came up today from a vendor that we're working with, and that's their canvas. And someone was asking me, hey, can you help me find something here? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. So I started uh, kind of digging around and looking, but gives you an example of some of our artboards may look that way, but we'll go through some examples that might help you um, see some differences. Uh, there are also um, times like uh, 
where you've got your your icons and illustrations and different types of specs. Um, <clears throat> those some can sometimes be arranged in a, a bit of chaos. And any of us that have worked on anything like this can sometimes have um, uh, a little bit of a mess. And then we end up having to go back and clean it up and straighten it out. Um, so if you start off that way, sometimes that can um, help you move a little bit more quickly through your projects. And um, another one is that we already have a lot of this stuff. So we as designers, we use design systems. Uh, design systems are patterns and standards that we would carry through whenever we do our day-to-day -day work. There's also, um, if you look at activities that the POs do, or maybe you even participate with your POs in doing user stories. So you may see that there are patterns that you continually use and repeat with those, so you're not coming up with like a new way of writing a user story. Um, there are some pretty good ways of doing that. And if you were reinventing that wheel every time, it could um, be, become strenuous on people trying to understand what your stories mean. Could also take uh, a bit more time trying to come up with the patterns that you want to use. And then of course, our developers, they have coding standards. They've had them for, uh, for many, many years. And um, Here's a, a few of the purposes that they have coding standards, but but it does help you kind of understand that like, hey, we're not we're not on an island on our own. Other people are trying to leverage our our tools as well. So um, we can also learn from others in the industry, or not in the design industry, but other industries in general. Uh, if you look at the left here, we've got like a bad example of how you might wire the electricity in your house and then a good example. And then also like electrical plugging and wiring, um, how there are standards, uh, international standards can vary, but whenever you're in that specific space, they are pretty standard. And you get accustomed to being able to do that and it makes it much more rapid. If we all um, decided to wire our houses like the one on the left, each time we had somebody come in to try to uh, maybe add a circuit or modify something, it would cost a lot more for us to have it worked on and it would take a lot more time because somebody would have to try to figure out um, what's going on with this. And um, this is not from any kind of design book. It's from really from uh, an industry standard. So you see that the good, the bad, and the ugly, and this is from um, <clears throat> someone that's writing about uh, standards in uh, manufacturing. And so standard, standardization is strategic business issue that has direct impact on new product development. There's a direct relationship between leadership and standards and leadership and technology. So we have an opportunity to be leaders in our groups and show our teams a great way to work if we develop some standards around the way we lay out our canvases and even our file structure and that kind of thing. It was interesting because some of the additional pieces of this quote talk about safety and keeping keeping manufacturing on track and that kind of thing. So I, I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, quote. Uh, also, this saves time. So um, you're going to save time and time is often money, especially if you're freelancing. But um, if you're within a team or even if you're, if you're on your own, you're not coming up with a new way to do things every time. Uh, a lot of times you can even develop your own uh, internal design system for these kinds of things. And just to give you an example is if you have four people on your team and they spend just a few seconds working on something over a day, those four people could um, spend three hours trying to organize their content and their structure. So I'm going back to the, um, imagine the frustration of trying to maintain this. So that is saving some time. And then at the end of the day, if none of that all matters, just look at what we do and how we are UXers and Jacob's Law is one of the, you know, one of the standards that we can follow. And this is one of my peeves here is like a, a door handle that you can't pull. It's like, it's like, I can't pull that. I have to push. But um, Jacob's Law does say, um, oh, I've got two users there, but users will find it easier to navigate through an interface when the UX design of it resembles the one they know from other interfaces as the no well-known pattern makes them feel safe and secure. 
So overall, the standards can um, impact and have benefits that help the future you, allow others to quickly orient and contribute, um, aren't just for UX <laughs> prototyping, but also for icons, illustrations, uh, we saw that it could be coding standards, those kind of things too. Uh, other industries have been doing this for years. It saves time, which adds up to dollars, and it lets us um, follow our own our own standards. And with that, we'll do a little bit of show and tell. I know I kind of ramped through that real quick. We will have an opportunity for some questions. So um, if you want to ask questions while it's in context, that's okay. Um, or we can do some, and we will do some at the end too. So uh, we'll give you an opportunity either way, if you want to take notes and ask at the end, or if you want to um, ask at the end of each of these. So we'll let Selena kick it off with some of the um, best practices that she's used where she is. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Selena, so I work at Red Ventures, um, but Red Ventures owns a lot of properties. Um, one of them is Bankrate, so I actually work on bankrate.com. Um, so I was kind of tasked showing our how we name our artboards or our, our frames. So I'm going to share real quick. All right, so I'm just going to kind of give you a breakdown. Um, this is just an example of how we kind of break down our files and have them structured so we can easily go back to them and see kind of like the history of the story being told. Um, so we kind of like I have a how to use here. Um, give you an example. Um, so in the past, this is what our structure would look like. It will look like something like just random names. Um, you'll have multiple, uh, say templates in one file. So we just had a mess of things and people just named it whatever they could, whatever on top of their head. Uh, so what you thought was named a template was something someone else thought was. So it was a lot of different names going on. Um, and then we kind of came up with a way to kind of structure that so you could kind of see it played out. Um, and then we also gave it a little bit a, uh, oops, sorry. A little bit uh, background information of like what each of these uh, these uh, say pages are about. So we also gave you some examples of like why we kind of did this. Um, it's very much what Wes talked about. Uh, it's standards. We're trying to find, go back to our files, have a findability, have a versioning, have access to all versions of a job, the tests. Um, so if we thought of a, a new example, maybe we can look back and see, hey, was this tested before? or maybe we can do X, Y, and Z differently. Um, naming, um, just to have a shared vocabulary example, like someone would name a, tem a template something else um, than what you thought in your mind. So just have a shared vocabulary. Um, archiving, again, just to have an archive of all the things we tested or things we had QC or reviewed from marketing or the stakeholders. And then onboarding, if we have new team members, obviously they can kind of see the story and see like what we've done. And it's just not a blog. Um, it's not very scary to just deep dive. It's very organized and it feels a lot more welcoming. Um, and then we have like little examples here of what to do, what not to do. Um, and I'll say this for real, it, it's very hard to make people do this, but um, even I mess up sometimes because sometimes I'm just going really fast and I even forget the rules I placed. Uh, but it's just a, a, we have it written down that we can always refer back to. Um, but we kind of came up to the idea of like just lowercase everything, no spacing, no weird numbers, 1.2, no decimals, like just a way that's easy to read um, and easy to follow through. So these are just some examples. So I'm gonna go through the pages here. Um, so we have our discovery and research here. Um, so the discovery up here is pretty much uh, the scope of how things are done. Uh, so for this example, we're using the Big Rate Awards uh, 2022. Uh, we pretty much for scope, like how to design the hub and then the template page as well. Uh, so we had all these categories that we had to create pages for. Um, and this just came up from the writers and the marketing team. So we had to like make sure we had a template that kind of fit all these categories. Um, and then we have our just like mil main pillars of article template, like things that we really need on this template here. Um, and just like some block of copy and stuff of just prototyping some things out. And that came from other meetings. Then we just had our inspirations. We had our page from last year. We had our competitors. 
see what they're doing. And people can drop comments in here and say like, oh, I like this thing, or I like this, uh, this component here. And then we just have uh, more inspiration. Um, this is an awards page. So we have the Oscars, the Grammys, MTV, just really wild stuff out there that we may like and just have them placed here. Uh, place right here. Um, and then the playground is really a, a place where we anyone can go in and have their little block or place where they can just experiment. There's no real organization here. It's just like, here's your little place that you can do everything. But you can see like, you can see where my work is and you can see where Ricky's work is. And it's obvious, like that's all his stuff and there's all my stuff. Um, and there's no like one way to do this. Like you can split the playground out into different categories. Like you can just say Selena, Ricky into separate pages if you want. I see some people do that. But as long as you can tell like, this is my work and this is his work. Uh, so when people do jump in here, they know who to um, at the message like at Ricky or at Selena. Um, they know who to notify. And then we have our wireframes. Um, usually we talk about which wireframes we wanna submit. So we have like our few wireframes that we like. Um, we kind of place them right here. And usually that goes into the marketing QC. Um, and we usually place one frame at a time because marketing be like, which, which frame am I looking at? So we try to place like one thing at a time in this page. And so we only share this page and then they can see, and they know exactly where to go, the marketing QC review. And they drop their comments in here. And then the QC archive is really a place where we, we archive all the, the, the wire, uh, wireframes that went through review. And then we write notes as far as like what they like, what they don't dislike. I kind of didn't write all the notes in here. I just have them as an example. Um, so we can go back and see um, what's missing, what we need. Um, maybe we liked an idea here. It's just a, a place we can go back and kind of see the history of what people were thinking or what were their comments before. And this is just a place for components. Um, it's just for like for us, if we're just need components right away and, you know, pretty much. Uh, so we're not redoing things multiple times. Uh, so it's just a place for like scrap paper for components. Uh, but yeah, and then usually final, we bring final to the top here once everything's done. Uh, so this is what is delivered to the developers uh, and other designers for crit, uh, critique. And then, yeah, so we just have our hub. This is what came out of it, our category page, the modules for the developers. Um, and then this is another template as well. And so, yeah, this is pretty much how we organize our artboards into one file. Any uh, questions? Very cool. Love this. I'm so glad we're doing this. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Thank you, Selena. I, I do have a question. So is this around a specific um, project or how, do you have a file for each initiative or how, how do you determine when to create a new file? Um, it's, I guess, for each new initiative, like um, whatever, there's something specific, say if like a new component and they want to create something. Um, there's a template I have in here and they just duplicate that template, which has all these pages already ready to go. Um, and if they don't need all of them, they can delete them. Like if they don't need a playground or discovery search, they can just like get rid of them. Um, but it's any like major category, um, either template, component, uh, ideas, yeah. And in, in your, and I'll let someone else ask questions too, but in, in your um, organization, do you like finish this and then this file is done and you archive it off or do you iterate on the same file? No, this so you know there's gonna be a best um, bank rate awards 2023. That's gonna be a whole different file. Okay. Um, but we'll know that we can see everything we did for 2022, um, and then just kind of iterate on what we liked. Probably go into the QC archive. We can go to the discovery research. This is already here. Um, so a lot of the work is kind of like done. We just need to like maybe update a few things here and there. Um, but that would be a whole different file. It'll be like. Yeah, bank rate awards okay. 2023. Cool. And I know we're going to see a few other examples here in a minute. And one thing I forgot to say at the beginning is that there is no right or wrong. These are all like amazing executions on how things work 
and maybe you're even learning as you go to like each organization, you know, modifies the way they approach things. But um, since we'll see different different instances, it's all what's right for the organ for the specific organization and des design team. So that's very cool. Uh, I'll let someone else let someone sorry. else ask. I think we got two people with hands raised. Yeah. All right. Uh, Pedro, would you like to go first? I couldn't tell which one raised their hands first. Um, thank you. Uh, Selena, hi, how are you? Hello. I wanted to ask you, I see that you have a component. Do you also use the assets for sharing assets like a design system or is kind of your design system under this component uh, uh, window? Uh, no, we have a, a main design system. Um, this is just like temporary. Um, I let people build whatever components they need in their page. Um, so I'm actually like the design system manager. So um, I let them design in their pay, in their file, whatever components. And then we talk about how we can bring that into the design system. And so I pretty much go in here, remake their components to like, you know, all the layers are named correctly and everything. And it's actually, uh, reusable and then I bring it into the design system with all the notes and whatever they had intention for that component. Um, but this is just like scrap paper for now. Um, and then I go in, we talk about which components we want to bring in. Thank you. I guess I'm up next. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I see that you have wireframes and you have final. Um, at what, at what point, how do you make that decision from going from the wireframe stage to, I guess, that the finals will be your final mockups? Is that what that is? So it's like a, the next step from the playground. Um, so usually it's like you pick your best ones. Yeah. Um, and then we put it into the wireframes for us, like designers, to discuss. Okay. Um, and then we, we used to bring marketing into this. Okay. And then they didn't know what to look at. And then they were like commenting on things that, like, we're in like things they weren't supposed to be commenting. Okay. So this is like mostly for the designers, like, all right, you pick your best ones. All right, let's talk about it. And this is just for us. And yeah. then we just pick one at a time and place in the marketing QC. Um, yeah. And then sometimes just through lo-fi and high fidelity. Um, usually I have those broken out, but a lot of times we don't do lo-fi. Um, okay. So basically fine is like one is being kind of approved for both marketing and the design team was like we really like this then you take it a final yeah uh yeah so i mean it, it's just an extra extra step for like organization it's it's not needed yeah. um but going in here and then like oh yeah remember that one i did over there i'm like i don't know which one so we just kind of like pick the best ones we like for us and then we decide and then bring it to marketing qc and then final is like final, final. Like this is like going live. That's what you're delivering to devs. Exactly. Yeah. And usually that is like down here, like after like to like, and then once it's done, we like bring it up here. So people don't have to go down here looking for it when they open up this file. Beautiful. All right. I think that's perfect timing. So we will hand it off to Leah and let her uh, share how she approaches things there at Admin Help. All right. Getting cozy. One moment. All righty. I got my screen up. I'm also going to put a timer on myself. Okay. <laughs> um, and I got my notes. OK. Um, so uh, hello, everyone. I'm Leah. I am a UX designer for Advent Health. And I'm currently on the product team that's focused on scheduling. Um, so um, uh, that involves you know, finding doctors and uh, scheduling appointments and helping users do that um, online and improving that experience. Um, we're a pretty cross-functional group at Advent Health. So there are a lot of people looking at my files, um, anywhere from other designers to developers, product managers, um, even marketing sometimes. And uh, the question that I get a lot is, where can I find that one thing that you shared with me a hundred years ago 
you have no recollection of it. So it's not just, you know, <laughs> finding a file. It's also kind of going back in time as well. Um, so the question that us as a team we ask is, you know, how do we make it easier for everyone to find the thing? Um, and I think the key part of that is consistency. Um, and over the past year, uh, the design team has refined how we label and organize our files and specs. Um, that way the experience is the same across people, projects, teams. Um, yeah, and so the key players that I think have come up from that work um, is making sure that your canvas has a safe space for artifacts, um, section titles so that each of your flows and screens are labeled appropriately, um, and annotations. And so from here, I'm gonna just jump into a file that I think has a little bit of everything. So um, here's an example where that space for artifacts comes in. So this is something that we would call an artifacts frame. Um, this typically will have like screenshots. Um, sometimes I pull in uh screens from other designers hey leah i'm so, oh. i'm sorry sorry to interrupt we're not seeing your screen right now oh no <laughs> you missed everything oh what's going on <laughs> um that's, that's weird okay. you're painting a really great picture with your words <laughs> yes you're very oh man i don't understand um is anything happening now yeah. Oh, it's loading up. There, there, there it is. We got it. We did it. We made it. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Um, Sorry. No, thank you for interrupting. Um, so this first part here is our um, uh, what we call an artifacts frame. Um, and uh, going back to what I was saying, uh, so normally it's reserved for things like screenshots. Um, sometimes I will pull designs from other designers, like if there's a pattern that I want to reuse and I just need to, you know, see it side by side. This is a safe place for me to stick those things where people aren't going to confuse it with the actual um, designs or um, specs that we want people to be looking at. Um, this next section shows how we use our labels um, or section headers. and there's kind of three different layers to it. The first one is where we actually name the project that's happening. Um, we even like have like a little area to like put a JIRA ticket if you're wanting someone to actually like reference notes uh, in JIRA as well. And then you've got like a primary uh, section here and then um, a secondary one, if you're wanting to label things a little bit differently, or if you've got something um, specific, you know, that you want to um, call out between different screens. Um, I forgot to mention it too, but up here, it looks like this purpose for the artifacts frame, what I actually did was the screens down here below, I used it to capture different interactions. Um, so that's another use case for this artifacts um frame uh so i went over labels um and then the other thing that i i mentioned was annotations um and we have a couple different um versions of annotations um we have these little labels here that we sometimes use like let's say you've got um a screen and you're only working on a very specific part of it um it's been really helpful to call out to developers like this this right here, this is the new thing to focus on. Everything else is existing, nothing's changing. So um, don't stress out if you see something there that's not um, something that you're familiar with. Um, we've got just simple annotations like this too, um, where again, it can be any notes. Um, it can be about styling. It can be about um, interactions, behaviors. Um, um, yeah, like here, it specifically calls out that this is a UI note. Sometimes I'll like help with content or copy. And so I'll specify like this right here is um, a content note. Um, let's see. And then we have post-its too. 
Um, usually post-its I reserve for like work in progress files. Um, but this is one of those cases where, you know, I want to grab someone's attention. I found something that probably needs to be updated. So I'm going to put a nice big red sticky here. <laughs> Um, so that's another form of annotation that we have that's been really valuable. Um, and what we did was as a group, as we started putting these like pieces together, um, we did um, add them to our assets. Um, so as you're like putting a file together, it's something that you can easily just kind of grab what you need. That wasn't what I wanted to happen. <laughs> so grab what you need. Um, we have like a place where you can like number the annotations too. You can drag the node out here. We take advantage of auto layout. So these kinds of things will expand as you use them. Um, and this was before like the Figma community too. So now if you're looking for something similar like this, you can search communities and there's some really great um, uh, tools out there where they provide um, a very similar asset. So um, that's about it. Um, here's a zoomed out view. Um, and the thing uh, talking about consistency too, is this is the pattern that you're going to see across other designers files. So if I end up having to work on a different team, I can go into that file and I'll know immediately this is just their artifacts. This isn't what I need to focus in on, but if I want some context, I might want to reference it. And from there, I can go down the page and clearly see, oh yeah, this was a part of this story. Um, I can get more details there at that, you know, in that JIRA ticket. And I can see what all of these are screen by screen as well, because they're clearly labeled. I think we got two minutes. So does anyone have any questions? Bernardo. Okay. All right, I have a conversation. So I noticed you have that area where everything's kind of labeled. You're telling them this is new. Um, you seem to have like an overlay, so you ignore this part. Is that what's delivered to developers? Mm -hmm. This in particular is a spec file. Yeah. So this is like, our developers can come here. And it, again, it's the same across all other spec files. So for the most part, they're familiar with the layout and what to reference. And that's usually what the, the specific annotations are for, is stuff that I'm trying to communicate to our developers. So like, for example, if that area that's brand new you have there, um, what they will do is basically sort of inspect just that section if they need to build if that into, uh, a, comp a component. If something's brand new and you want it to build as a reusable component or something like that, do you mention that in the notes? Uh, repeat the question, if there's a new component? Yeah, so if you build in that section there, say you have that new area and on the left, and you want that to be a reusable component, meaning you will find that you're gonna use that interaction pattern maybe elsewhere down the line. Do you tell them in the notes, hey, this will be reusable? Yeah. So for the most part, we also have a lot of our components already in an existing design system. Okay. So the annotations in, in this case would be more like, here's an existing component and here's maybe something that's slightly different about it. I think if we need to change the component itself, that's a design system specific story. story. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So you would see those things in the file that's specific to the design system component. All right, fantabulous. Thank you. And, and there is one thing that you're not seeing here is this is a spec file. This like Selena has a page in hers that is specific to what's being delivered. This entire file is about this area of the product. And so each of these sections are things that are going to be delivered. We also have design files that are iterative and you can iterate on those. They still use the same structure, yeah, but yeah. They're, they're not intended for something that we would hand to our developers. We move that into the design file. We actually are the spec file and we'll replace this content with the updated 
work that we're doing. So this yeah. is a document that lives and will continue to change and evolve over time. As, okay. a, and as will our design files, but our design files like we'll make a new page and we'll just keep working iteratively on different pages as we, as we build out um, new concepts and that kind of thing. And our prototypes will often go inside that design file where okay. we can do testing and that kind of thing with users. And, but this is, this is what's going to be delivered. This is where, where kind of the, the gold is. So it has a, a lot fewer, um, you won't see a bunch of iterations here. You'll just see one specific uh, deliverable and that's it. Deliverable. Okay. Perfect. Uh, we are so, out of time. There are yeah, yeah. questions. Hands yeah, James, James, I think we have a little bit of time. So okay. James and, and Selena have a couple of questions and we'll move on to the next one. Um, I don't really have a question so much as just a comment. Um, like I really love the way this is put together. Um, so that it's not just a design system of components, but you're actually seeing examples of how those components are applied, right? Um, you know, that that is something that I've, I've found that is missing from like a lot of different companies don't have this kind of a reference point. Um, so it just, it's terrific. Yeah, the design team basically has its own design system for all of the artifacts that it uses on its canvas and for laying things out. Yeah, really nice guys. Thanks. And Selena? Hey, Leah. Um, okay, dumb question. Your arrows, is this a plugin or do you guys actually make very flexible arrows? Um, so it is a plugin, okay. but... And I'm, can I tell you which one it is? Uh, I was looking for a good arrow plugin. So <laughs> is it auto flow? I think, I think it's, it's auto flow. Oh man. But, <laughs> but what I've noticed is that um, since some of the more recent updates, auto flow is like not the best. It's better than a lot out there. Uh, but if you have access to Fig Jam, that's going to be a lot more flexible. Okay. or, you know, stitching things together. All right, cool. Thank you. Awesome. And thank you, Leah. That was a great overview of the spec files that you use. And uh, Justin, we'll let you jump in next. Cool. Uh, thank you, Wes. Uh, Leah, I actually had a question. Are your, are your uh, iterative working design files so so beautifully and neatly organized as, as the spec <laughs> files? They are... They're very, they're structured the same, but I am guilty of not making it anywhere near as clean and perfect. Yeah. Those artifacts uh, boards might be a little amazing. bigger. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot larger, but they still use the same structure. So they'll still use the same headers. So when you're trying to orient yourself, you can see where you are and they do often start from top, top down, reading left to right and there might be multiple iterations on a canvas, depending on what you're doing or a few screenshots, but they're all grouped together so that you're not like randomly sporadic kind of mess. And yours look a lot better than most, Leah. <laughs> uh, so, hello, I'm Justin Heidenreich, uh, senior UI UX designer, work with NBC Sports Next, uh, the Golf Now division. Um, uh, Golf Now, we have a, several, different products in the in the portfolio. Uh, I work on two in particular I spend most of my time on, which is um, uh, Golf Now, uh, which is a, a tea time booking uh, website and app. And then I also work on a, another app uh, that has a, an up and coming web counterpart called Compete, which uh, allows you to um, track your, your scores and compete against friends and uh, create and play in, in tournaments, uh, golf tournaments. Um, and gives you access to your your round history and, and all this this cool stuff. So, um, our, our the way our teams are, are set up is that uh, the design team is, is we have like one uh, one designer basically embedded in a in a product team. Uh, so, except for, I'm, I, I'm a lucky one. I'm, I'm like split between uh, between two products, but but mostly we've got one one designer uh, per team and. Um, kind of our, our story with our uh, design file setup is that it's, it's a real work in progress. 
uh, right now because we are uh, we have been up until literally this this month um, uh, split between three different uh, design tools. Uh, some people using using Sketch, uh, some using uh, Figma, and others using XD. So. Uh, we are in the process of transferring everything over into Figma um, uh, right now. And uh, let me um, share my screen to show how I have set things up. Um, yeah, so, okay, we're looking at the, this is a ported over, a ported over sketch file. Uh, basically for one of the uh, features in Compete called uh, the GPS Viewer, where you can, um, uh, as, you're, as you're playing and uh, going hole to hole, you can track, uh, you can track your, uh, your, your shots and see, get, get information about uh, yardages and um, enter your scores. And so the way I, I in Sketch, I have this, um, the same kind of uh, setup here. The, the way I had, had structured my files and, and sketch was to basically have all of my all of my project work, um, each each ticket I, I work on or feature set I work on as like an individual uh, page, and, along with some um, some basic kind of templates for uh, regularly used um, uh, device sizes with guides and, and rulers uh, pre set up. Um, and then just keeping everything on on uh, on one page as much as possible. Um, so you know this this whole thing like it kind of it kind of starts to break down as the as the uh, size of the file um, grows and you add more projects and especially what I've noticed in Sketch is it particularly has a problem when you have um, a number of like layer styles uh all in the same um all uh, being pulled into the same page into a lot of different art boards uh so we're transitioning everything over to uh to figma right now and um yeah you know we have the same problem that uh, that a lot of uh, teams do which is that that question that always pops up of of where is the you know latest um latest approved file or, or the, the the final designs uh, so in my in my setup, I I put that um, right at the top, uh, so it can't be missed. Of course, when they're uh, when the final designs are are ready, and um, just giving a, a simple header to uh, each of the the sub feature sections uh, for for this view. Um, so I just do do one project uh, uh, one project setup in, in Figma per per feature. Um, and then just kind of just organize the sub features uh, with, with some simple um, labels. Uh, so for my, my planning space, um, this is something else carried over from, I've carried over from uh, Sketch, but uh, I, always, I always like to copy in um, the, the JIRA ticket itself, just taking a, a screenshot of it. And highlighting any notes um, that's uh, uh, any kind of like important callouts for the for the design, uh, and usually, so I've got a couple monitors here, like like most of us. And as I'm in the planning stage and kind of working through wireframes and thinking about how I'm going to solve the design problem, um, I usually like to have this up in a in a second screen, um, so I can just kind of easily reference back to it, um, and in Sketch, I used a, a plugin called Preview and Browser uh, that just kind of let me keep it uh, you know, open. Opened up my artboard in a separate browser window. Um, I don't know if there's an equivalent in, in Figma, but uh, either way, you can always open the browser version of Figma to the same project and and have it open there. Um, so uh, yeah, this is um, uh, <laughs> my own my own sticky note system. This is uh, pre. This was created pre uh, uh, before I uh, discovered uh, uh, Fig Jam. Um, so just made some uh, have uh, sticky notes set up uh, for me to just make different callouts about the interface. Um, these are just again just my own personal notes that uh, that I use as I'm uh, working through and uh, and 
um, you know, thinking about the, the different uh, design issues. Um, so here we're looking at, this is the kind of the old interface and just kind of calling out some of the issues I see with it. Uh, and also some um, uh, interactions of the existing interface. Uh, so I know what all the primary uh, user flows are uh, as, they, as they relate to the screen. And, uh, and then references and uh, some, some, rough, uh, some rough wire frames that I, uh, I just keep, I like to keep this stuff just um, all in one place. Uh, I I've, in the past, I, I have segmented this more to have, you know, my references on one page and wireframes on another page. And I, I end up um, kind of bouncing, <laughs> bouncing around pages as I, as I work, because I like to regularly just reference back to things. So, um, so I thought, what the heck, I'm just going to take all this stuff. And uh, I'm really the only person looking at this anyway. So I just dump it all on one page and, I, and I'm kind of done with it there. Um, and same thing with the sandbox. Uh, this is just for me, like starting, starting to explore some, uh, some design concepts based off uh, the wireframes. And this is just, you know, it's, it's uh, nothing pretty to look at. It's just like junk junk files, um, little graphics I've, I've made here, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, this is just a, a total uh, scrap playground um, for me to experiment, experiment with some ideas. Um, I have a, a couple, um, a couple pages set up here that are uh, labeled for, uh, for review. So reviewing, um, review of uh, static frames and uh, any kind of, uh, uh, reviewing prototypes and um, one thing I, I like with I really like with uh, Figma is just being able to to uh, send a send a link directly to um, to these pages uh, which is which is really nice as opposed to going you know through sketch going through envision and and all that stuff um, I can just always keep this up to date and uh, keep this review page up to date and just send a send a link to it. Um, and another uh, related to that, another Figma experiment I have I have going on right now is is to um, is to lean on the versioning system uh, for for this page. So as I as I work through and make uh, make updates to to the designs. Um, being able to just clear out anything that's old and uh, save this, uh, save a new uh, version um, of this, uh, of, of my file uh, so that the for review page is always up to date with the, with the latest designs. There's no old junk, there's no uh, past versions there. And if I need to access those, I can always step back through the, through the versioning and, and get through, get to them. But um, trying to keep it uh, optimized for, for simplicity of, of sending uh, the latest screens uh, and pages for, for review to the, uh, to the product, uh, product manager uh, to get approval on those. And um, again, uh, I think I've seen this a couple of times, this had a local components page. Uh, this is, uh, these are parts um, that are you know, components that are not yet part of a, a design system. They're just used locally in the file, uh, sort of a, this is a I, I, I like to have this, um, it's, not, it's not necessary in Figma, but um, I got so used to it, having that symbols page in Sketch that I just couldn't, couldn't let go of it. So I uh, keep a local components page just to keep track of everything. And uh, cover, of course, with um, like to put a label on it to uh, just to clearly see the status of, of projects in my um, in the project view uh, without having to open it up. Um, and then, uh, yeah, again, just uh, the device template. So this is um, uh, primarily designing for iOS app uh, with the with the Compete app. And uh, I just like to have some ready, made, ready to go templates there, light and a dark version that I can uh, pull in um, as I start uh, working through like final designs. Um, 
So that is, yeah, that's, that's the, the, the breakdown of, of my setup. Um, yeah, I would say we, within our team, the, the designers are, are not typically, um, uh, collaborating with each other on a, on a single project. It happens on occasion when they need some extra support, but most of my interactions happen with, uh, with the product manager and, uh, front end devs. Um, uh, so, uh, just trying to keep things as, uh, as, as simple as, as possible, uh, within, within my files. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Justin. Um, that was, that was cool. I don't know if anyone has any questions. I, I have a quick one. Like I see that you did the device templates. Do you have those, uh, in your main library too, like as a component anywhere, or do you have to, you, do you duplicate this page each time? Like, how do you, use um, I, I just make this part of a project template. So this whole thing is like, a. I have a template set up and I just keep the for, for compete app and I just keep those, uh, those device templates in there with, um, you know, our, our margins, uh, guidelines for our margins, uh, uh, already, already set up. Um, but, uh, right now we, yeah, our, we have a, a, the pattern libraries and all that are, are still like, are still in sketch. So, uh, and they aren't part of, uh, they were never part of the, the, the libraries to begin with. So uh, maybe something we do as we, as we build that out in, in Figma, uh, but this is just what's, uh, what's working for me right now. And I don't see any hands up. So I do, I do have one more question that I'll ask is uh, around the review process. How do you know when the review has been approved? Is there anything that they do to indicate that? Or is that a conversation? How do, how do you know that? Uh, yeah, so not, uh, not within um, the file. Uh, there's no, yeah, they don't really uh, mark it in, in here. It's more like a conversation uh, or through, uh, you know, we always uh, update JIRA tickets with a, a link to the latest approved file uh, for a developer handoff. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we just kind of tend to work directly with each other and, and communicate a lot. Uh, it's fairly I mean, fairly small team, so um, it's it's easy it's easier to do uh, that, that way. That makes sense. Awesome. Well, if there aren't any other questions right now, and um, then maybe we'll let Nick jump in, and then we'll do some more questions at the end after uh, I do a, a wrap up. But again, we'll give everyone a chance to ask Nick questions before I jump in with the wrap up. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, Justin. That was yeah, awesome. That was great. Um, I, mine will definitely be shorter than everyone else's because uh, uh, I've only been at Axel for, let's see, a month and 15 days. So our process is not quite as, um, I guess the process that I've developed is not quite as like in depth as, as a lot of these other more mature um, flows. But I used to work at Stacks for like the last three years. And a lot of the things that I worked on over there, I brought over here, but this is a smaller company and we're a startup. So I'm kind of like incrementing, um, you know, little by little and kind of building up to like a more mature process. So um, just a little bit about Axel. So I'm, I'm the senior product designer over there. And um, basically what we do is we, we make software that serves the freight and logistics community. Um, so we've got like kind of like three key players in the space. There's like shippers, like think like Walmart, Target, like people that need goods that need to be moved. There's uh, carriers that are like trucking companies that actually move the goods. And then there's these middlemen called freight intermediaries or brokers. And they're kind of like market makers and they like connect goods that need to be moved with people that need to move goods. And they like make full loads and they make things more efficient. Um, so we, we kind of started out by serving these intermediaries and we're like branching out to like kind of serve um, like a wider kind of slight, like swath of, of, um, of this industry. So um, I'm going to show you like a really basic project that was actually like, uh, we call it a test drive. So like when I interviewed for the job, this is like not like a real thing that, we, that I actually made for the, for the company, but this was a, um, like a test drive just to show like, hey, here's a sample problem. 
and like how would you solve it and uh, and like what would your deliverables look like so i'm totally okay to share this because it's not real um and also feel free to jump in at any time with questions like mine's going to be very short i've only got three pages and i'm totally and i'm just using like the free version of figma because that's i only have three pages so um how I like to break things out and in my like real things that I build that I don't have any of them yet because I haven't started a project for like start to finish. Um, but how I would build it out like in the real deal is we would have like a cover page kind of like what Selena had showed earlier, but I didn't have time or like space to put it here. Um, but like this is kind of like where I do all my work. This is like I call it concepts and like this is kind of where kind of like all of our competitor research comes together to kind of like form a picture of like what well what are other companies doing or what are other similar um similar patterns that like already exist um in in products that are already built and already have a user base um this problem that i was trying to solve was it's called creating like a request center um and like this was like kind of like a prototype that i came out of here with and i had like a bunch of other versions i don't know what happened to them but um the request center you think of it as like a like a two-way communication between like a person using the system so like we could think of them as like a, a broker like a freight broker um and like maybe someone on on the operations team so uh something common that could come into a request could be something like like hey i i want to raise my credit limit from something to something else and it kind of starts off a whole process and there's a back and forth like um where we're like you know the the risk team might ask for you know some some financials or something to kind of like make sure that things are a little more solid before we go and like extend a whole bunch more money to this person right so um what this uh kind of ended up being and i won't kind of belabor like the actual project so much it's more like the concept of how it would organize things but like it was, i was thinking like okay well what are some similar things like okay it's probably like a like a kind of a two way street. So we've got like some status that needs to be made aware of and then like some, some file uploads and kind of like a conversation that needs to go back and forth. Um, and, and like at the highest level, you know, we need to be aware of like when there's been a change. So that's kind of like why this is here. So not to get too much into the original design, but it kind of went through some process of uh, competitor analysis up here. Uh, we did a little bit of light sketching down here. There's like a little crazy eights exercise I did on a whiteboard. And um, just kind of like some post-it notes. This is like super, super basic journey mapping. Um, and then like a couple of, of components that I like had in this space. So I, I see a lot of really, really similar patterns uh, across everyone here. So that's actually like really cool because it makes me think that like, okay, maybe I'm not like a total imposter, right? Um, and also, sorry, I keep like looking up over here. This is where everyone's video is, um, but I am looking at you. Uh, here, I'm going to move it. So um, something that I, I haven't seen anyone else do yet, and I think I can share to this, is uh, I have like a little prototype. So the, the main things that I like to include are like concepts is kind of my working space. Prototype is obviously a prototype. So like, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where like a developer could come and play with it to kind of get a feel for it. So I usually like to do like at least a basic little prototype that they can click through. You know, you can kind of see like, okay, these are tabs. They switch this view. And like maybe, well, what does this thing do? Okay, it pops up a little menu. Here's how that looks. Like this thing pops up a modal. It's, it's just good to get a little bit of context. So I think that like, if you're able to provide um, maybe not like a, a fully functional prototype, but you know, like some basic things just to kind of paint an actual picture with pictures instead of trying to paint a picture with words. I think that kind of goes a long way. Um, you know, when we're handing things off to our developers and got like, all right, that's where the toast comes out. Cool, cool. And like kind of get a full picture of things. Um, and then the other thing that I like to include is uh, this annotations. So I've seen like a lot of other people do annotations and I think this is like a really good thing. I don't think I have anything like particularly special about the way I do annotations, but um, this is definitely something that I feel like, um, you know, like our, our developers are, are, are kind of like our users in a way that like, they're consuming our mockups and like they we have to consider them as like a, basically like a, a person that's going to be interacting with what we're giving them. So I always like to kind of go through my designs and anything that's not, you know, readily apparent from just looking at a picture like, you know, you, you might guess that this is the default that open is the default state of these two things. Um, but it's it's just better to say it. So like I just wrote it down like, okay, you know, this is this is the type of 
like this is the default state and like this is how the filter should work and like these are the results that we should bring back in this box right so i can make a pretty picture but i also want to tell them so that when they're making it um you know it's really clear that the right results are getting in here because one of the hardest things that i found to um fix after the fact is when everything looks right and there's data there and everything's great but you know what it's the wrong data like that's tricky to find and a lot of times qa misses that so i try to get ahead of it with stuff like this um there's another thing i wanted to touch on here i put a note about it um oh okay so like uh selena had mentioned this thing in the comments about like developer notes um i think that this is like so this is just like a way that I've done it. And I don't know if I even did it in this file, but like how I've done it in the past is, and I didn't do it in this file because I did it really quickly, but I like to just like take this entire thing. Like, so it's annotations is literally a copy of prototype. I like to take everything in here, make it a component and then move it over to annotations and just lock it. And then I put all my annotations on top of it. And if anything ever changes, I do it in the prototype because the prototype has all the linking and the clicking and all that stuff. And, uh, and that way you have like one source of truth that like every can all, everyone can always kind of agree on. And there's never any question about, oh, well, you know, mock-up A has the button two pixels to the left. And, you know, everybody's always had that problem. Um, so I'll just kind of go through here really briefly. There's a couple of things that I, I looked at, like, you know, things that are required, you know, saying that like this is required, this is required, this is the file types that we'll accept, stuff like that. This one's got a whole bunch of annotations on it. so. Things like, where do you get this data from? Like, okay, this data comes from this piece. You know, like I, I like to try and um, be really clear about, um, you know, what this is. Cause it might not be clear. Like this, this happens to be like the request ID, which is not super obvious if you don't know, you know, what that number is. It's, it's not a date, you know, it's not a phone number. What is it, you know? So I like to try and say that. Um, Let's see what else. I think I think I actually that's pretty much all I really wanted to get through. Um, I think I had a couple other notes here. Oh, uh, so okay. So like here, here's like one another key takeaway of like why I do things like this is like. So this hasn't happened yet at Axel because I haven't worked on a project start to finish, but it happened all the time at Stacks. So like I would work on a project and then three four months later, that's when the development team would catch up and actually work on the project. And you know, when in three or four months, when somebody asks you, like, "Hey, what are what are we supposed to be showing in this box when resolved is filtered or when open is filtered?" and you're totally not in that headspace, um, I cannot like tell you how many times my notes here have actually saved me for being able to just like have an answer right off the flop, like off the bat. And it makes it makes me look good, you know. It makes me look good as a designer, and um, it kind of like helps to, you know, build confidence in the design to the dev team as they're kind of working through it. So um, yeah, that's kind of like all I wanted to share here. And um, mine's definitely definitely like a lot lighter than um, a lot of the other ones, but this is definitely like a less mature uh, system here, but uh, happy to field any questions. So Anardo. All right, thank you. First of all, this is really interesting. Um, I have some beef with an annotation page. <laughs> <laughs> sure, hit me with it. <laughs> Um, because I usually remember write... there's there's no wrong here <laughs> right. about how we all approach things or not. <laughs> so it's interesting, right? Because like sometimes you have um, um, like a like dev like a development story, dedicated dev story where things like would define like what would happen in the in the view for resolved, right? Uh, what would happen in the view for open? What are these values and what they mean? Um, is are you seeing that developers are just even though it's in the in the, the in the dev story and this requirements there? that they perhaps read it and uh, having this annotation just help them do their job better is that kind of what you're seeing i mean i so i mean i think yes that's that could be true but from my experience it's like the dev tickets uh that are written by the product manager a lot of times they'll miss details like this and uh like if i'm going through my design and i'm being intentional about what i want to show at, at certain places like, I feel like it kind of falls on me to, to write it down and to define it. Like, yeah, I could probably put it in the ticket, but like, that's kind of the, I mean, not to say that it's not my job, but it's like, that's like the PM space is kind of like yeah, writing yeah. tickets. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to live in design space, I'm going to, I'm going to like put it all in the context of the design. So I think that like, I mean, 
kind of like what Wes was saying, there's no no real wrong way to do it. But yeah. um, if you have like, like if you're working from requirements and you're being given like very specific things to work off of, like, yeah, maybe that way is, is probably the, the way to go. Cause then you don't have, you know, the same answer living in two places where it, it one place could potentially change, you know, if requirements change and then you've got a, a mismatch. So, I mean, definitely something to consider, like depending on the team that you're working with and the way that the organization yeah. is set up. Um, but I found that this works really well for for me, and especially at Axel, where we've got a yeah. really small team. Um, it's just, I, I just kind of like shoulder like a little bit more of that. PM. I think it's still a very interesting thing. So then, like, how do you deliver that to them? So you might have a story. Do you put a link to this page in that story? How does that communication happen? Yeah. So like, what I would what I would like to do, and what I used to do at Stacks is we would do like a kickoff. So when we would uh, when it would kind of come time when the engineering team's like, all right, we're going to start this new epic, we would like right. sit down, have a meeting and go through the whole thing and they would see it all right as, as a holistic thing, but like in a particular ticket. So like, let's say that like, you know, there's a ticket to make this, this list here or, or like implement this filter button or something right here. I mean, I would just take this entire frame here and I yeah. would share it like with the link to the frame and I put it in the ticket. And that's that cool. way I know that like, you know, anything that's on this page it's got all of its details included in it. And I, and hopefully I'm not like getting, you know, pinged a million times about, you know, what's supposed to go in this list and whatnot. Cause I mean, it, it happens and yeah. it's, it's difficult to switch um, head spaces like that, you know, cause usually months later you're on to a, you know, the next project. One thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. You mentioned a kickoff. Does that happen like before grooming? Before grooming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for us, backlog grooming is something that kind of happens all the time. Okay. it's like an ongoing thing so like if we've got like like when when we're going to do a kickoff i think of it more like like the product team and the design team um we've been kind of doing our homework ahead of time and like building like the roadmap right and then like yeah. when it comes time like all right it's we're coming up it's time to do that roadmap item that's when we would do like all right let's let's kind of you know, yeah. get the stakeholders together, not the stakeholders, but the, the developers who are going to build it. I guess they're kind of stakeholders in a way, but like get the developer team together and um, sit them down and show them the whole thing, like holistically. And design's not the only one that would present at something like that. A lot of it comes from the PM. It's kind of like a 50-50 at that point. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I like this. It's interesting. Thanks. Very cool. All right. And Joy has her hand up as well. Thank you, Arnardo, for that question. Hey, um, I was actually, uh, I appreciated the prototype inclusion. I, I do find that that helps a lot to kind of uh, say a lot of things or clear up a lot of things that may not have been in the annotations or just it, even with describing it on call, it, it really does clear up some things. So I do like that inclusion, but I was wondering if you have annotations on the transitions or possibly like animations for certain things, like how you had the, the moving like message, like do you, do you leave annotations that there for that or do the developers look at the specs? you know yeah i i i am trying to think if i've ever actually done that and i don't think i have but it's just because like i've never been able to get to the level with my designs where i'm able to be like so specific about like the way that this button should have like a little animation or like how a screen should change like i've just never gotten to that level of polish that it's always like you know, time crunch, you know, and that's always like the first thing that gets crunched is like little animations and stuff. Um, but I mean, that's like a great, I think that would be a great way to do that. If, if that's something that you were going to do, yeah, to put in, in um, an annotation, like to describe the animation. Selena, do you have any experience with that? Um, and here, I can stop sharing. The thing about Figma, it's so limited with prototyping that I just usually find an example online and be like, this is what I want it to do. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm really close with my developers and, you know, me being a developer, I'm just like, know how to talk about it. But I tell my designers, like, by the time we try to prototype this, we wasted so much time. And the thing about Figma prototyping, it's so heavy on mobile devices when it comes to like web design, it's just like not there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, if you have an example online, just show them that and just like show them how that works. That's how we do it right now. Until yeah, Figma I, gets their game together. That's the wonderful <laughs> thing about this specific talk is that there is no right or wrong. It's just however you approach it. Um, 
I, I know at Advent Health, we have built prototypes where you can look at them sometimes. And then we also have pointed to examples as well. So it just depends on um, what the specific use case is. Leah, did you, did you want to add something there too? Yeah, I've, I've done prototypes with annotations, but it really only for very specific use cases. Like it, it depends on the audience. Like if you know that you're going to be talking to someone who might not be familiar, you know, with your area and you really want to guide them. I, I've done it once, but um, I don't, I've never done that for like spec files, like handoff files um, in particular, because I feel like whenever I do have a prototype, I, I use that more in like the conversation phase, um, kind of like what Selena said, like if I'm talking to my developers, like here's a prototype, this is what I'm trying to do. This is like, the thing um and sometimes i will like in the the handoff file like sometimes i'll link to a prototype too like through those annotations but um yeah having the notes on the prototype uh, don't do that very often all right cool yeah and um you know a lot of times you can say this needs to slide up slide left slide right and we are yeah we already we have designed kits that we have worked with the developers on, so we can give them feedback there too. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead, thank you all for the presentations and walking through your work. I know that that can sometimes be a little hairy because you're showing like real live projects that you have and that kind of thing. And Nick, thank you for uh, scrambling to get something when you started a new, new gig. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and share again here and uh, yeah, it's funny, like you guys actually got to see like what I turned in for my interview to get the job. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. So uh, let me see here. Uh, stick with that one. Uh, if you're working with teams, organizations of some kind, um, I hope that you find some of these techniques to be useful. Uh, and I think we've seen that there are different ways to approach these. Uh, we don't all have to put the spoons on the left and forks on the right, but um, we do have places and homes for these things. Um, and uh, I think that we can all see that like, you know, everyone benefits from this, our POs, our stakeholders, other designers, if you switch teams or somebody new comes on board, the developers certainly benefit from knowing where to go. Um, always on the, you know, you heard Selena say, oh, they know to look at this file. And the marketing folks know to look here. And um, Leah talked about spec files that they have. And um, Justin talked about, oh yeah, they always come here. So th those are useful things. Um, and start small, see what works. You know, um, Nick was showing, he's like, hey, we're not super mature right now. Uh, you've come a long ways, right? So, and you'll learn more as you go and as your team grows, but um, do be disciplined around it um, and have accountability for the things that you do. If you, if you say, oh, this is just something really quick, those really quick projects end up turning into something big. And then, or you come back to it and you're like, oh, what was I thinking? I don't remember what I needed to do here. Like how uh, Nick referenced um, when sometimes you don't get to come back to a project for a little while. Um, but the one of the key things is don't reinvent a wheel that already exists. Um, there are so many people out there doing different things and hopefully more people will share their approaches like this. Um, if, it is, if it doesn't exist, then yeah, try something new or something that does exist, doesn't work for you. Tweak it until it does work for you. And notice that like we're all using like similar patterns within our individual files. So if there's something that you can reuse over and over again, make it a component or a library object or something like that. Um, but most important of all, just do what works for your team. Um, if it isn't something that you need yet, um, if you're you know, really close to your PO and you're just a, a designer of one, I think you'll still benefit from it just from showing the, the savings that you have being able to focus on the customer's needs rather than um, trying to wing it each time you come up with a new file. Um, here are some resources. I did paste these into the chat as well. So if you want to page up and look for that, you can grab those. But those are some of the resources about why this is useful and important. 
And then we do have a, maybe a couple of minutes for a, any more questions, just general questions if anyone has them, or if you don't have any, then we can move on to the next slide. So I'll wait to see if any hands get raised. <laughs> 